We're just super excited to be back in Asia and in Malaysia. We're also flying with Scoot today for the first time. So many people giving us fruit. I love it. You can even buy a whole cow's head. So you can't come to Malaysia without trying Nazi Lemak. quite early in the morning and today is the day we leave Australia and fly to our next country of Malaysia. Usually when we're flying early in the morning I'm a little bit nervous just because we have to get up early and then we have to get to the airport and there are tons of variables involved like if we're gonna get a taxi or if the public transportation works as expected. But today we're staying in an airport motel directly opposite of the airport. So it's basically just crossing the road and then a few minutes walk. Which sounds like a really good plan until you look outside and it's raining a lot. No rain at the moment. I think it's time. So the airport is on the other side of this large road. Ready for our next country? Yes, I'm very excited. We're also flying with Scoot today for the first time, which is a very low cost airline. So that means they don't have any entertainment on board, nor any food. Um, you would have to buy that separately. So we brought a lot of snacks and we hope we're gonna be able to take them in because I think usually you're not allowed to take them on the plane. I somehow can't imagine an Australian taking our food away. I don't know. In Germany, easy. Like people would love to take our food away. But here, I just can't imagine it. People are so nice. <laughs> okay, that was barely a 10 minute walk. And I think we're at the terminal now. I'd say that was worth it. Good motel as well. Not too shabby. Quite nice actually. Didn't really sleep that well, but I guess that's normal for an early morning flight. I always feel like when we don't have to catch a plane, we have trouble waking up at 7 or 8 and if we have to catch a flight, we are awake at 5 because our brain's just going, sure, why not? Don't miss the alarm, don't miss the alarm. Okay, check-in went very smoothly. The woman working at the desk was super friendly. She even asked us where we want to sit and yeah, also we didn't have an onward flight ticket, which normally can be a problem, but she said with COVID and everything, they have other things to worry about, so she, she just let us go. So far, they didn't check our baggage for any food or drinks, and I don't see any scanner at the gate, so I think that's good because it would take quite a long time to check everyone's bag, searching it while boarding, so I don't think it's gonna happen got a lot of food <laughs> and drinks. We each brought an empty one liter bottle so we can stay hydrated on the flight. Today's itinerary is first an eight and a half hour flight to Singapore and then a one and a half hour layover. I actually wish that we had a little bit more time, like one day to go and explore Singapore some more and eat some food. But I think one and a half hours is also fine because then we've only got a one hour flight left to Kuala Lumpur. I think we're already very excited to continue our journey. We are boarding and we still have all our food and drinks. Till now there's no one else sitting in our row. Let's hope it stays that way. So far, so good. Also, the plane is generally very empty, so I think we'll even have a row to ourselves. So far, everything is going to plan. Singapore for about two hours 
and we're already back on our way to the gate because boarding is opening in 20 minutes and the airport is quite big. Okay, leg room is... well, there's no leg room on this one. <laughs> but the last one was nice. Here we are in Malaysia. Never been here before and we're very excited to be here. <laughs> that was a long travel day. Yes, but Scoot actually didn't disappoint. Yep. Even on the second flight we weren't checked or anything so that was good and yeah we directly got our luggage also a plus. Probably nothing to do with Scoot but, <laughs> but anyway, still nice. Yeah. Now we'll get a sim card get a grab to the city center. We're just super excited to be back in Asia and in Malaysia and it's gonna be good. You can already feel the temperature change. Oh yeah, it's super and warm. I like it. <laughs> early in the morning 20 to 10 but you know that's that's our version of early um, and we're getting up this early because we want to go to this market the Chowkit Pazar Chowkit market it's a wet market one of the most well-known markets in Kuala Lumpur and uh, I think it's gonna be really good loads of stalls loads of food and it's probably gonna be very busy Here, right at the start of the market this is where all of the meat and fish is sold and I think when you read about this market you will be warned that it's not for the light-hearted and it is super impressive to see I mean this is where you can get the freshest product available but it does also look and smell very fresh of course uh, kind of crazy for the people that are used to you know buying their stuff in the supermarket you can even buy a whole cow's head which we probably won't but still I think walking around here is an interesting experience but the market is much bigger than that as well and we're also going to continue to the vegetables and everything else and I think it will be more quiet there and I mean I know it's called wet market but I think I haven't been to a market this wet <laughs> yes this is very wet especially um, in the fish section the floor is just swimming basically with um, juices I do prefer this part though. <laughs> it smells like fresh coriander and mint. Yeah, yeah. Banana leaf. Used a lot here. All the nice dishes. Immediately, it's much more airy in here. It smells very nice. Fresh fruit. And yeah, this is also really cool to look at and to buy your fresh fruit and veg. Thank you. Welcome. Hey. Uh, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> so many people giving us fruit. I love it. <laughs> Seriously, such a perfect mango. It's super sweet and super juicy. Maybe if we go to the fish section, you can also try some fish. Um, no, thanks. 
everyone here has been so friendly and yeah it's just a really relaxed market of course it's not really relaxed it's very bustling but it doesn't feel as if you're pressured into buying anything or if you know people are unfriendly and just in a rush so we're really enjoying it Okay, so he just filled up our bag completely and it was only one ringgit, which is very cheap, it's like 20 cents. Um, I don't know if that's the normal price probably, but also he was just a very nice guy. Kuala Lumpur is known for being very hot and humid and we can confirm that. That's, that's been our experience so far. It is actually quite nice, I don't think it's too warm or anything. So I don't know what these were called unfortunately, but they are fried things with corn inside and then chili sauce on top, so couldn't say no. You get three for two ringgit, seems like a good price to me, but this is going to get a little bit messy and I have to first get the chili sauce open as well. I set up my snack shop here. <laughs> Look at this one. Okay, got my chili sauce, got my... I'm just going to call it corn popper. Corn fritter. Corn fritter. Cheers. Mm. The dough is quite dense, but it's nice. But what does it consist of? It's basically just dough with lots of corn kernels inside. And then some green herbs as well. The chili sauce is really nice on top. It gives it a nice spice, but I like it a lot. Let's try these. The very practical thing about mangosteen is that you don't need a knife or anything to eat it, so you can just buy it from stalls off the street and eat it with your hands. I mean, I would pack some wet wipes or something because it does get your fingers sticky, but apart from that, very easy to eat. It has been a while since we've had our last mangosteen. I think it was in Vietnam, 2016, so it's like very, a little bit meaty, but soft and then it tastes sweet and sour basically. So it's similar to a lychee, the taste I would say, and also the consistency, but it's a bit softer even, and not as sweet maybe. But I don't know, it's really hard to describe, but it's a very, very delicious fruit. <laughs> Right next to the market there is also one of Southeast Asia's largest Sikh temples and uh, we just had a look inside, it was really really interesting. You do have to cover yourself up, also your head with the scarf. The security officer at the door was super nice and friendly, he encouraged us to also take photos and videos and um, said we can even have something to eat in there because there's like a, a food hall where, you, where everybody can just grab a meal and drink for free. So yeah, it was really, really nice and interesting. Everybody was super friendly. So for lunch, we're now heading to the area of Kampung Baru, which is pretty close to the Chowkit market. And Kampung Baru is one of the oldest districts in Kuala Lumpur basically and it's very old it's almost 120 years old and it gives you a great insight into the old Kuala Lumpur because all development for that area has been halted so no new buildings are allowed to be built there. Kampung actually means village in Malayan so let's see if we'll have some village vibes there. to this place called Wanjo to eat some nazi lemak. It looks super full. Uh, we're just gonna go inside and see if we can find a place. But this might take a while. But we heard that their nazi lemak is supposed to be really good and I think it's worth the wait then.
So you can't come to Malaysia without trying nasi lemak, which is basically, I think, the unofficial national dish of Malaysia. And it's essentially coconut rice with some toppings such as cucumber and these dried fish flakes and some sambal, some spicy sauce, and an egg. And then you can choose your own toppings apart from that. So you can have it with chicken, you can have it with beef. We both went for beef rendang as a topping, um, which we already know from Indonesia. It's like this beef, slow cooked, and then also we went for some chicken. Looks like I have half a chicken here on my plate. The sauce is so good. It's very rich and creamy, also quite spicy. But then also I think they use some sugar because it is quite sweet as well. But I must say for me personally, the star of the show is the beef branding. It's so deeply rich and coconutty. Just love a good branding. What's nice about nasi lemak and all the other rice-based nasi dishes here in Malaysia is that you can just mix and match and you get also lots of variety all on one plate. Of course I'm a big fan of the chili sambal. Um, it just goes well with pretty much everything. What we noticed here though is that you never get a knife to eat your dish with. And that's also because many people prefer to eat with their hands. So I shall do the very same. Looks really good. I think it's also been marinated in the kind of sambal, or at least it's a very rich and sweet sauce. It's not as spicy, but it's definitely very delicious. And of course also the coconut rice, which is the base for everything, is just very fragrant. And you also get these dried fish, always pretty much, on top. And they're not for everyone maybe, but it adds a good crunch and I like that as well. And to wash everything down, I got some cool milk tea. You just... <laughs> I just spilled everything over my hand. Oh, it's fine. It's really good. That was a really good lunch. And they also have a connected juice bar. So I had to get my new favorite drink here that I discovered in Malaysia. And it's carrot juice with some milk as well. And for me, that's just a really good combination because I love carrot juice in itself and the milk adds a little bit more creaminess to it. I think I'm gonna have this more for now. And also opposite the restaurant is a little stall that sells these dough balls and they're filled with either kaya or chocolate. I got a mix. Kaya is basically a coconut jam. We've already tried it in Singapore. It's quite sweet but we like the coconutty taste. Did you get the kaya or the chocolate? Mm, I think it's the kaya, but I'm not in the middle yet. So it basically tastes like a pancake kind of dough. Mm -hmm. mm. It's very sweet, gelatinous and coconutty in the middle. It's a very sweet but a very good dessert and it gives you the opportunity to try kaya if you haven't tried it before because it's a real classic in Malaysia. Kampung Baru is a really relaxed area to explore and the houses here are really cool and you've got all of these nice scenes of people just living their lives here in Kuala Lumpur and it's much quieter than pretty much anywhere else in the city. And it also looks like you have a nice selection of restaurants and also spots to buy nice smoothies and juices so if you like these kind of things it's also the place to come. I think we got a very good first impression of Kuala Lumpur today and it makes us even happier to be here I think and to be able to explore Malaysia in the next few weeks. And I think we can definitely say that we already really like this city, um, we like the people, we like the food very much, uh, everything we've had so far has been amazing. And that plays a big role. Yes, and <laughs> it's also just got a really cool vibe and mix of old and new and we'll see you in the next video.